Hey, what's up guys? So we're here to go over the best pro class setups right now for Modern Warfare, taking into consideration also what some of the pro streamers are utilizing, as well as giving you guys some feedback in case you guys are more of a casual player, because sometimes they do run things more so for competitive. For example, like the Claymore is actually something that is banned, so they probably won't be using it, but for scrubs, hey dude, whatever gets you the kill, right? But anyways, let's go ahead and get started. I do want to also mention first off, just a heads up, I'm not basing my information off of playtesting myself, I'm also basing this information on what the pros are actually running and giving it to advice for the Call of Duty community. Uh, we're taking a look at Optic Crimson's class, as well as also taking into consideration Karma's class setup. So these are both pro players, and we're gonna be talking a little bit about it. So let's go ahead and without further ado, get started. So um, right now in the game, ARs are primarily the dominant weapon of the game, and the dominant weapon right now is the M4A1. So let's go ahead and go over that first, and I'll also give you guys the best class setup if you guys do want to actually run a SMG setup. Now, this is pretty much overall the best gun in the game. Uh, I would argue that there's not really anything that can compete with it at like every single level. It's a very well-rounded gun. So let's go ahead and go right into the attachments and I'll go ahead and explain what the heck they do. And I also want to mention as you level up the gun, you will see more attachments pop up because you might not see some of these attachments early on, uh, but they will come up later down the line. So anyways, let's get started. So first off, you want to actually run muzzle break. This is going to give you recoil control at the cost of aim gun steadiness as well as aim down sight speed. Next up for the optic, you can actually run a few different optics. I've seen a lot of other players also run the Corp Combat Hollow Sight and it doesn't really matter what sight you are tactically using. However, I do want to mention that some of these sights are bugged right now and even though they'll give you some type of uh, modification like extra aim down sight speed, some things don't actually work properly right now in the beta. There's also a bug with the sniper rifle where you're actually gaining uh, faster aim down sight speed, but in, in reality it says it as a con. So keep in mind, some things are subject to change. But overall, most of you guys will probably uh, ideally want to go for the reflex sight. But again, this one is kind of subjective. You can technically pick whatever one you want. They all technically are supposed to reduce the aim down sight speed, but give you some type of an optic. So the reflex sight is usually the go-to one. That's the closest to like red dot that you'll have in uh, other Call of Duty games. Uh, next up for the stock, you want the lightweight stock. That's gonna give you uh, extra aim walking movement speed. What this is, is strafe. So if you want to think of this as basically stock, like all the other Call of Duty games, it is pretty much stock. Um, now the heavy stock is different. This is going to make you actually lose aim walking movement speed, but it's going to give you extra idle sway control and aiming gun steadiness. But we're doing lightweight stock here. And then for the under barrel, you're going to get extra vertical uh, uh, recoil reduction with the vertical foregrip. That's what they're running. And then, as far as magazine goes, on almost every single gun in the game, it's going to obviously give you extra ammo capacity, but it's actually going to reduce a lot of time the movement speed and aim down sight speed. Um, so there are a lot of negatives with attachments in this game versus previous Call of Duty games, just as a heads up. And then for the grip, this is pretty much the go-to on every single gun. It's going to give you extra aim down sight speed and sprint to fire speed. Uh, basically, in this Call of Duty game, a lot of times the sprint out and sprint in and out speeds are a lot slower, so that's just going to help out with that. And occasionally you will see people run some of these. Um, I'm, I'm almost 100% betting that wounding will be banned and competitive, but if you guys do want to run uh, as an extra attachment, if you don't need a sight, this is actually going to be very, very good. Um, Wounding, what it does is it makes it so bullets cause target healing to briefly be delayed. So this is really good because basically makes the person sit there longer waiting to actually heal up, uh, unless of course they have stim. So this is actually going to be really, really good if they don't ban it in competitive. I would be absolutely surprised. Uh, but if you are just pub stomping, you could go with side of hand. So um, there are, again, variances where pros are not running certain things, and that is, of course, due to... Um, certain things again being banned and competitive. But like I said, that one will more likely be banned. So we went over the best AR setup. Let's go ahead and go into the best submachine gun setup over here. So uh, the MP5 is the most competitive submachine gun as of right now in the game. And uh, going into what we're actually running in the attachments category here, we're running muzzle break, which is gonna give you recoil control. It does cost aim down sight speed, but again, a lot of times uh, every attachment in this game is just gonna reduce your aim down sight speed. And the game is relatively a slower pace, so it's more uh, campy, AKA tactical is the word uh, they try to use uh, when uh, people are basically camping, and basically sitting on head glitches. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and also run lightweight stock. That's gonna give us extra aim walking movement speed and then uh, vertical foregrip, and then our magazine. Now this is actually something that's different. 
This actually is going to give us a different ammunition. So it says 10 millimeter auto ammunition, and it's gonna give you extra damage at the cost of fire rate and aiming and recoil control. But theoretically, because you are actually firing slower, the reduction of the, the aim and recoil control it's kind of mitigated already by the uh, gun actually not firing as fast anyways. And then for the grip, you're running stifled. Now, I also want to mention um, this just as a heads up. So there was a uh, class set up by Phase Sensor, and uh, he was actually not utilizing the rear grip. And instead, he was actually utilizing instead uh, over on the barrel attachment, there's a... Uh, lightweight barrel, which is going to give you extra aimed on sight speed at the con of bullet velocity. Now, keep in mind, sometimes when you are viewing players, uh, they are just trying out other things. Even pro players, they like to test out other things. But overall, this is on the final day of the beta, so more than likely, they pretty much tested most of the things. However, I just want to mention that also as a heads up. Um, but this could be technically utilized, uh, but it's at the con of bullet velocity. So one thing I do want to mention uh, really quick is bullet velocity. What that is, is how fast the bullet actually travels, because in this game, a lot of the guns are not going to be hit scan. They're actually projectile based. In fact, they're supposed to be all of them. But again, sometimes certain guns, they're basically considered hit scan at very close ranges, like in Black Ops 4. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the go-to setup for the uh, SMG as well as the AR. Uh, but I also wanted to mention perks as well as uh, the lethal and I guess tactical here. So as far as the competitive perks go in the game, I guarantee you Quick Fix will be the competitive one. However, it is not unlocked at the moment. And that's something very important to mention is certain things are not unlocked for all of us as of right now in the, the beta. And uh, EOD is basically the go-to one. So this is going to make it so you don't die to C, uh, C4 as well as the... Uh, claymores basically this is what why everyone runs this it's to not take damage from claymores but i also think that competitively double time will be used especially on hard point um so basically this gives you uh double the duration of the tactical sprint and you get to also increase your crouch movement speed by 30 percent which can be quite good if you don't want to run around making a sound because in this game you don't have dead silence as an ability to just throw on like a perk so this can actually be quite decent for that as well if you want to kind of sneak around um, and i did see some of them did use this in the very beginning most people ended up uh swapping to eod and then for perk slot two, it's it's got to be ghost. With everyone running the personal UAV and the regular UAV, uh, this will definitely be the one that literally everyone is going to be using. And then uh, kill chain can also be really good just for you know just cheeky gameplays if you want to go ahead and stack some streaks. And then for perk slot three, everyone is running battle hardened because there's no pick ten system and people aren't just slamming all of their uh, pick ten onto gun attachments because you can just equip a bunch of uh, gun attachments in this game. Um, everyone's going to have those uh, tactical you know, flashes and stuns, and this uh, battle hardened reduces the strength of enemy flash, stun, and EMP effects. Uh, so that is pretty much the uh, perk slot for the lethal. I mean, most people are running either Semtex or the Frag Grenade. Um, the reason why you won't see people utilizing Claymore is this is 100% going to be banned in competitive Call of Duty anyways. And keep in mind, I'm looking at pretty much a lot of the pro streamers' uh, different VODs to see what they're uh, playing, and I just showed it up on screen um, earlier. But basically, uh, this is tactically, I will say that it is pretty good for objective uh, modes. But again, this is because they are playing competitive, they won't have access to it. So a lot of times they're practicing for it, uh, competitive. And then for the tactical, honestly, I feel like a lot of times with the flash and stun, your opponent is actually going to hit you anyways. I saw a few people trying the stim. It honestly is kind of slow. Um, it can help uh, out against wounding, but again, wounding will be banned more than likely in competitive anyways. But I just wanted to go ahead and mention that as a heads up, that it, it's, it can be great against that. But anyways, there you guys go. There's the best class setups for AR as well as submachine gun. Uh, that's pretty much the primary go-to guns. And keep in mind though, I just want to mention as a heads up, different guns can actually reach a maximum level at different intervals. For example, the M4A1 can actually reach a maximum level of 30, and the SMG can reach a maximum level of 25. And this is still currently in the beta, so we might actually get some more attachments uh, later down the line. And uh, just keep in mind, some attachments will have a con, but some will, won't even have a con. So while you are leveling up some of these classes, keep in mind that you can just throw in, for example, like the uh, one, uh, milliwatt laser over here you could just go ahead and throw those on as long as there's no cons sometimes there's attachments and different things that will have no con oh another thing i wanted to mention some some competitive players were using recon it's on a lot of the submachine guns 
So what recon does is it makes it so when you're aiming down sights, you'll see their name. A lot of times when people sit on head glitches, this is going to be very valuable for you just to be able to see their name at a further distance. Um, but like I said, wounding is definitely going to be very, very good. But anyways, hopefully this video was informative and helped you guys out. And uh, let me know, guys, if you guys um, think there's any other things that I missed out on. Definitely let me know in the comment section below. But I feel like this is, even when the game fully launches, this is probably going to be like the go-to class setups, uh, especially with the perk section uh, when the game finally launches. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully... Again, this video helped you out, and if it did, drop a like on it. If you're new here and do want to see more Call of Duty content, hit the subscribe button, turn that bell, and you'll definitely see more. But I also want to give a shout out to all the people that I uh, use their class references to. Um, so I'll also link them down below in the uh, description box. But honestly, if you go to any competitive uh, place, they are literally just running this. This is literally the best class setup by Crim6, and pretty much everyone is running this one. So this is like your ideal one. If you're not sure if you want to run sub or AR, I honestly want to say that the submachine guns will probably end up getting a buff when the game fully launches or perhaps next week when the beta becomes open for uh, PC as well as Xbox because right now I would say the M4 is definitely the most dominant gun. But if you guys disagree, again, I would love to know in the comment section below what you think the best gun is, but I think this is unarguably the best one in my personal opinion as well as a lot of the pro players. But anyways, thanks for watching guys. Have a good one. I'm signing out. Peace.